There's a new trend that Koreans are leaving Canada, the UK, and America to move back to South Korea. What's going on? We came all the way to the West to chase the gold bag, but now it appears it's time to go back. No! We got to talk about it. Uh, this is going viral. Korea sees increasing trend of reverse migration. Here's the article. Cost of living, safety, infrastructure, and healthcare are now amongst reasons for moving back to the motherland. Korea is witnessing a pattern of reverse migration from countries, Andrew, such as the U.S., Canada, and Britain that were once considered dream destinations for people seeking opportunities. David, I'm those are the best countries. They're the Western countries. They have, like, the cleanest, most advance how could they leave it to go back to south korea we got to talk about it because we got reasons why south koreans are moving back now we got to talk about real quick who is moving back are these korean americans no well these are mostly people that were born in korea were korean citizens at some point but want to come back to korea either stay a u.s citizen while moving back to korea or actually get their korean citizenship back through a new program. Right, so they were already immigrants to, for example, America or Canada. Maybe they felt like they weren't achieving what they wanted or things got uncomfortable or they got worried or something popped up in South Korea. So they're moving back. Right, which is, right. Which right. Is well, it's okay because we never consider them real Americans anyway. So, you know, they're just going back to their motherland and uh, that's where they belong. But uh, South Korea has always had a different relationship with America is much better than the relationship that uh, America has with China, you know, like South Korea is not China. Um, <laughs> make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Small House House on Amazon right now. Uh, let's just get into the article. It says, there are four things I love about living in Korea. It's cheaper to eat out compared to the U.S. It's safer. Korea got a lot of security cameras all on the street, block by block, and the speedy delivery system and delivery culture, they're making life so convenient. Yes, there are certain things that we're going to go through that actually are much more convenient in Asia than in America, although probably the average standard of living in America is still pretty good, but there's certain things that America is lacking, and so... Uh, we're going to get into the seven reasons why people are moving back to Korea, David. What do you got to say before? Real, that? real quick. I got to say this. I've uh, spent a decent amount of time in Japan, in South Korea, in China, in Taiwan, in Singapore, in Hong Kong. Uh, I'll say this. Korea of those places felt the most like America. Mm. Like, I'm not saying it felt like America. I'm just saying relative of all those places, it felt the most like America. Yeah, I, I think it is influenced by America. Obviously, they're able to do western art forms better than the west in certain aspects right obviously we know right. k-pop k-dramas those type of movie certain types of movies they do extremely well so yeah i could see that yeah i mean uh, the weather almost reminds you of like denver a little bit you know rocky mountains granite it was you cold. know seattle chicago um i'll say this japan feels like somebody designed a vision in the future in the year 1990 mm -hmm. in china depending on where you go andrew it feels either like the year 1900 it feels like blade runner or like some sort of like post-apocalyptic future or it feels like potentially a slightly tacky version of the world in the year 2100 yeah china is very much steampunk now i would say this in south korea it does feel uh it feels more middle class i'm not saying that they don't have their own middle class economic issues like it's getting crunched yes there are a lot of shows about it that you could watch too but definitely their culture seems more middle class they have strong entertainment, strong sports. They are really into food. You need a strong middle class to kind of support those things. Uh, there's also this show that I watched on Netflix called My Name is Low Key Wan, which was kind of about like Koreans going back to Belgium, going to Belgium to work in Brussels. But then some of them by the end of the series, I hope this is not spoiling anything, go back to South Korea. I'm not going to lie, Andrew. Me and you have been to Brussels. I'm taking soul over Brussels <laughs> in a all right. heartbeat. All right, all right, David, we got to go into the list. Seven reasons why people are moving back to Korea. Let's delve deep. Uh, point number one, they're retiring. So a lot of people are saying that these stats of this quote unquote increasing trend is driven by people's parents who raised their kids as Americans. Their kids are native English speakers, but as a retiree, what are they going to do in America unless they're super Americanized? Why not go back to Korea 
as an American with an American passport and like American savings. Yeah. I think it's really interesting for some Asian immigrant parents to do this because it's like you came all the way to America. In the you, 70s, right? You lived here for like anywhere from 25 to 45 years. To, to, to 55. You lived in America. You became American. Right, you had your kids, you raised them in America, you struggled through America, you succeeded in America, and then at the end of your life, you're like, oh, I want to die in Korea. That's where I'm going right, to Right, go. right, right, but to be fair, Andrew, it's not just actually South Koreans. I know people of every ethnicity whose parents went back, yes. moved back to Korea, but I know the most people who are Korean like, I know the, the most of the people I know whose parents yeah. did this were Korean. Yeah, I, I've heard Japanese people doing this. I know some friends whose Vietnamese parents, after they kind of made it in America, they can live kind of like a nice life in the motherland. Taiwanese parents do this. Sometimes. Taiwanese do this. Chinese have done it. Uh, I want to say our parents had this conversation. They weren't close to moving back. I don't think they're going to move back. Uh, but they even... Because I think they had heard about this idea so much, they even brought it up. Right, right, right. Also, if you're over 65, you can restore your Korean nationality and actually get government pension on top of your American pension that you get either from the U.S. government or from more, more realistically from your corporation. It's wild. Uh, point number two, they're young and they see opportunities. So even though there's not a lot of granular stats... Of the increasing trends that they have of thousands of people doing this, some of them have to be young, but they could be moving back for opportunities that they might not have in America, such as participating in media. You can't be a K-pop star, Andrew, unless you're in Korea. Right. Like even Lisa, if she goes to the US or Thailand, she can never become a global pop star. Oh, I mean, Korea is just popping right now. So there's definitely things going on. There's a good amount of energy over there. People are like, oh, what's the next Korean trend, you know? So yeah, I, I could see even for some young people, they would move back, especially if they feel like uh, they didn't really hit a home run in America. Maybe they, maybe they grew up for 10 years and they were like, you know, I never really fit in here. Right. And then they're like, I'm going to go back to Korea. Right. Maybe they're hitting singles. Maybe they're hitting doubles, but they wanted home runs. They were looking for those big wins. And, you know, let's be honest. Life is just like that. Not everybody gets those. Uh, everybody knows somebody who did, but you're not necessarily that guy. Point number three, uh, they might just be really, really proud of being Korean and feel some draw to their ancestral homeland. And a, a lot of people are saying, especially the guys do. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of guys out there uh, would move back to Korea and maybe marry a traditional nice korean lady uh also i mean korea is just popping right now so think about it there's so many opportunities like let's say you're like from a family of four from korea right and like let's say you're like the youngest brother who moved to america and you try to start your own business and maybe some of it went well some of it didn't go very well but then your family member back in south korea is like hey you know, like we started selling like this new like honey butter, like puff corn stick snack that's like trending. So like come back and like help us, you know, do this opportunity. Or they're like, oh, we got the new topoki that's like in the shape of like hearts. And then like it's trendy on TikTok. So like this is a new bit. Like there's just, if you have family over there and they got a good business opportunity, why keep struggling in America when you right. have that optionality? By the way, I do think, let's be honest, I think the guys are more likely to move back than women are because it's more of a patriarchal society over there, whereas they may feel here or like Asian women may have more of an advantage in the West than yeah, Asian guys that's true, do. That's true, that's true, that's uh, true. Point number four, they want to be with their family. Pretty self-explanatory. It just depends on where your clan is at, how close you are to your clan, how much value they can add. Do you guys do business together? Do you guys just hang out together? Point number five, Andrew, a lot of people are saying America may have seen its best days peak behind it. Mm. That, well, that was indicated in the article as well. Well, let's say if South Korea is at, I don't know if it's at its peak, but it is definitely at its high of, you know, like of their civilization, I guess. Of it's like, in its peak zone. Yeah, whether of how like it's globally popular and like, you know, influential South Korea is. Then, yeah, I mean, it's definitely at its point, relative higher than America. Right. Uh, this guy said, it's not that Korea is that great. It's just that everywhere else has turned into ish. Because obviously, South Korea is not that great for working, especially if you're not working as a foreigner. Right, right, right. 
Uh, this guy said, I left Korea when I was 15, naturalized when I was 22, and I came back and moved back when I was 30. There was other a unpleasant aspects of U.S. society, such as drugs and politics and too much violence that uh, I just really couldn't deal with. However, people do not treat me like I am one of them because I've been gone for so long. Hey, guys. South Korea has a negative birth rate, man. They need some babies over there. So maybe if there's some fellas or ladies who feel like I want to go contribute to the motherland's population, they going back. Right. Somebody said the quality of life in the States, especially big cities, just seems to get worse and worse. And it's hard to see this country improving meaningfully in areas of health care and social security. Number six, Andrew, Asians get targeted in the U.S. for crime and maybe overall just not treated as good as they should be. Yeah, and I wonder if this has anything to do with kind of the anti-Chinese sentiment in America. Anti-China sentiment, I should be more specific when I use my words, uh, you know, closely. But I guess, like, do you think at all Koreans are like, dang, like, in America, we get mistaken as Chinese. I should just move back to Korea. Like, we're clearly not, like, getting the full respect here. Uh... I, I definitely think some of them feel that way, but I don't really, you know, before that people hated the Chinese, they hated the Japanese during World War II right. and stuff like that. And like, so I, it's really like, then they hated North Korea with Kim Jong-il and then Kim Jong-un now. So it's like, I don't really know. I just think it that is the, the main focal point right now, but I just don't, I, I think it would make some difference, but not a huge difference. Mm. Um, somebody said, I think most Asians are overly educated and underappreciated in the U S Canada, Britain. They will break into your car and burn your house down and beat you up because you're Asian. Of course, you know, some of that is like a slight exaggeration, but it's also like you get where that comment is coming from. Right. Yeah. Number seven, they can get access to a better personal lifestyle, but also infrastructure such as healthcare and dental work is much cheaper. Wow. Oh, to, not to mention those cosmetic surgeries are cheaper too. Oh, that's a good point. Right. And especially the, the Asian doctors, the Korean doctors who like, are well, they're going to more understand like the, the, the genetics of Asian, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, number eight, it's just got a good lifestyle overall right now. Um, some people are saying, Andrew, in Japan, they've reached a point where they didn't want to immigrate from Japan for like many, many decades, right? Or at least they would come and work for Honda or Toyota corporate or whatever, and then go back. So basically, it's South Korea at that point where people are enjoying it so much that they just like, they just need to come to America for what they need to do and then ultimately go back versus like permanently immigrating all next 30 generations of their family. Mm. Um, but a lot of people were saying that, you know, ultimately it really comes down to like what your place in society is. They're saying it's still better to be a middle-class wage earner in America than a middle-class wage earner in Korea. It'd be easier in America to get ahead economically. Oh, got it. So ultimately, let's just take a look at some of the comments here. It said, good, take your talents where they're appreciated. Asia is trending up. Just look at this past Olympics. Yeah, I think that a lot of people are moving back though. And Andrew, even countries that were considered like third world countries like Jakarta I, in, in, in Indonesia, I see some people moving back to Jakarta. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they could bring like American ideas back to Jakarta. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said, no, it's just old fob parents moving back and that's what's shifting the macro stats. So basically some people are saying it's just older parents. Other people are saying that, you know, a lot of people have a fairy tale vision of Western countries and they think their own country is hell, but literally it's just a grass is greener on the other side type of situation. Just like Aesop's fable of the country mouse and city mouse. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people are that. Other people said it sucks to be a woman raised over there. So it's just good if you're a man and you're single. And then, Andrew, this guy dropped a bomb. He said, immigration is a sham. Why move to the West? Your daughter's going to marry white. Your son is going to marry Asian, but be <laughs> have no power living in an ethnic enclave. And this is just going to make you lose all sense of what makes you you for generations to come. What a sham. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the truth, guys. That I do know somebody who's like probably fell into this situation before, but you can also live a completely unhappy, soulless life being in your motherland too, getting like squeezed by whatever dynamics I mean, guys, over there. Clearly, South Korea is not all rainbows and fairies and uh, a heavenly life because, to be honest, there's a lot of sadness in South Korea. We already know this. Birth rates are negative. Suicide rate is very, very high. So... 
obviously people have very strong emotions about their situation in that country too. So I'm not here to say South Korea is 10 times better than America. Not to say like, obviously I think American life is still very great, but yeah, depending on your stage of life, I could definitely see why you want to move back to Korea, you know? For sure, for sure. If I was my friend's older Korean parents, I could totally see why. Yeah, here's what I would say to those people that want to move back and can move back. Like, you should be grateful for the optionality. Like, you should just be grateful that you can even consider it. You should be grateful that you can even go back to South Korea and just be like, oh, I didn't make it in America. I'm going to go back. You mean have a dope motherland that you can uh, split time six months in, six yeah, months not out? Not everybody in. has a motherland country that they really want to go back to. Yeah, I get it. If you come back as like right. a millionaire, almost any country is going to be great. But right? like, yeah, I mean, even if you're like Burmese, you're just probably never going to go back to Burma. Yeah. Or Myanmar. Yeah. yeah. There's just certain countries that like are so hard to go back to. Like, you know what I mean? So it's almost like the fact that South Korea is such a good country that you're even using it as a plan B to go back to, that's pretty cool. Like, you should be grateful for that. You know what I mean? Should everybody, like, take that optionality and explore it? I think everybody, like, that's your advantage. That's one of your advantages, right? Maybe you think as a South Korean or an Asian in America, you don't have that many advantages, and we're underappreciated, we're overlooked, we're underrated a little bit, yeah. A little invisible. Yeah, a little bit invisible. So... But your advantage is that you can go back and your country is good. Your country's great. Right, right, right. And even though you might feel like when you go back, you're treated as a gyopo or like somebody who doesn't really fully, you didn't go through military service or whatever like that if you're a guy. So you don't like fully blend in. It's like you, you just go hang out with the other foreigners too. Yeah. So that would be a new identity and you, you, yeah, you'd have a lot of optionality there to come back as an American. I mean, like you said, everybody's in a different situation, Andrew. And uh, even two twins... You know, somebody got a family in the U.S., he can't leave. Because what's he going to do, move his whole family over? The kids get, you know, pay for international school? The, his twin brother is single. He can move, and that might be the right play for him, but they're two twins with the same personality, raised in America, living the same life. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's all, like, I think a lot of people, they look at their situation, they're like, oh, man, I'm born here. I'm, like, super, like, all about the stars and stripes, and I can't leave. Dude, this whole, you could view whole, the life as just like a, a game, like a um, Counter-Strike maps. Somebody's really good at Dust 2. Somebody else is good at playing a different map. If you're the beast at that map, just go to the map that you're like the best aligned with, that you can, that you feel like flows with you the best. Mm -hmm. But I think that a lot of people, they look at the bulk distribution on this growth curve. I mean, on this curve distribution chart and they're like, yo, but most people like me aren't doing it. I'm like, you could be an outlier. You could be on the bookend. You just got to take, analyze, deeply analyze the pros and the cons given your own situation and you know in your heart where you belong and where you align with, go there. And like you said, you should be lucky that you even have that choice because not everybody that is Asian does. So anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Reverse migration back to Asia, back to South Korea, particularly in this viral articles case. Let us know what you think. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.